Hello, I'm Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting. Welcome to Quick Hits. These short podcasts discuss recent events in the world of terrorism and counterterrorism and seek to provide a little bit of insight and background as to the nature of the event and what it means going forward. This is episode number four, and I want to look at an attack in the Democratic Republic of Congo that took place on December the 14th, a couple of years ago. This is now December the 16th in which the, a group known as the Allied Democratic Forces, or ADF, were suspected of killing 22 people in an overnight raid on civilians and on security personnel. The first question I think we have to try and answer is, well, just who are the Allied Democratic Forces? But before we do that, let's look at where they operate. The ADF operates largely in Central Africa, primarily in Uganda and in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or the DRC. The DRC, of course, used to be called Zaire, and before that, it used to be called the Belgian Congo. It was part of the Belgian Empire, if you will, in Africa. Not a particularly good part uh, for the residents of the Congo at the time. Uh, if you've read The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, you get a sense as to what life was like under Belgian rule in the Congo in the early parts of the late parts of the 19th century, early parts of the 20th century. The nation became independent in 1960, and at the time, it was the second most industrialized country in Africa after the Republic of South Africa. It is the 11th largest nation on earth with 84 million people and has an awful lot of very predominant and wealthy resources that should make it a country that's, that's doing well. It has a lot of gold, it's one of the greatest producers of diamonds in the world, and perhaps most importantly going forward, it is a significant source of cobalt, which of course is used in the production of lithium-ion batteries. Unfortunately, uh, the DRC as it's now known, it changed its name to Zaire, then the DRC in the late 1990s, has had a run of rather ineffective and brutal leaders. Mobutu Sese Seko took over in 1965. He reigned for more than three decades. He was ousted in 1997, and since that time, there have been at least two major wars in the Congo. It is estimated that up to 5 million people have died in those wars, and as of today, two-thirds of the population suffer from malnutrition. The other thing that uh, puts the DRC in the headlines a lot these days, of course, is Ebola. There are Ebola outbreaks in the east of the country, and because of the unrest, and the uncertainty and the instability in that part of the nation, it's really hard to get healthcare workers into the area to provide vaccinations and to provide uh, protection against diseases such as Ebola. But let's get back to the, the ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces. They have been around for, for quite some time, a number of decades. They began in Uganda originally. Uganda, it does actually consider them to be a terrorist organization, but most of their activity seems to take place now in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is believed that in 2018 alone, they have killed at least 249 people and have interrupted some of these effects at uh, Ebola relief in the eastern part of the country. What's really interesting about the ADF is that there are now reports and allegations that they have links to Islamic State. So we've talked a little bit in previous podcasts, the longer podcast, Intelligent Look at Terrorism. By the way, you can subscribe to all this content, podcasts, written material, interviews, etc. by going to www.borealisthreatenedrisk.com and hitting the subscribe button. But there have been allegations, especially by some senior American officials. For example, there's a Major Carl Wiest, who was a spokesperson of the United States Africa Command, who said back in earlier in 2019 that, that the group, the, the ADF, is in fact considered to have, quote unquote, meaningful ties to Islamic State. And there are videos put out by the ADF, the Allied Democratic Front, which in fact do make reference to ISIS itself. In one of the videos, a man explains that the group intends to create an Islamic State in the DRC and calls upon others, in fact, to join the movement. So this is a real terrorist organization. It is causing a death and mayhem in the eastern part of the DRC. What I want to point out, though, is I think some of the bravado and absolute idiocy in, of some of these terrorist groups in the names they choose to call themselves. So the ADF, the D stands for Democratic. 
there's one thing we know about Islamist extremist groups is they are not democratic. In fact, Islamist extremists hate democracy. They don't believe in it. They undermine it. And at the end of the day, they want to destroy it. I recall a trial a couple of years ago here in Canada back in, in 2015 of two individuals that were arrested in 2013 and accused of, of plotting to, to derail a passenger train between New York and Toronto. And one of the defendants, a Tunisian postdoctoral student called Chavez Agayer, I believe he, is, he majored in biology, elected to represent himself at trial. He refused to have any kind of legal representation. Uh, by the way, as an aside, if you end up in court being charged, get yourself a lawyer. It rarely ends well if you represent yourself in a Canadian or Western court. Mr. Estegayer not only refused representation, he largely refused to participate in his own trial. And when he did make statements, they were construed as being crazy statements, statements of a deranged person. And the one thing that Mr. Estegayer talked a lot about was how democracy, as he saw it, was an invalid system. And he used his disbelief in democracy. And the reason why he and other Islamist extremists defy democracy is that democracy is, in fact, the governance of the people by the people. And Islamist extremists believe the only le legitimate government is government by God. So that when you have democracies that create laws and create institutions, these institutions do not obey God's laws. Hence, they are invalid systems. And this is what Mr. S. Geyer stated in his defense, if you want to call it that. Essentially, he was defying the very existence of the court itself, saying that you can't try me because your laws are man's laws and my laws are God's laws. Anyhow, long story short, he ended up being convicted by a jury, although that jury conviction was thrown out on technicality. But I want to get back to this notion that these Islamist extremist groups uh, use an awful lot of names that purport to describe who they are, and they're, they're mythical. They, they bear no the relation to reality. So the Allied Democratic Forces in, in the DRC and in, in Uganda, this is a joke that they're calling themselves a democracy. As the spokesperson said in the statement already referred to, if they gain power in parts of the DRC, they will establish an Islamic state. And we saw what happened last time that occurred in Iraq and Syria. What ISIS was able to create with the, the relaunching of the caliphate in 2014 was anything but democratic. It was a brutal system which involved mass rapes, mass killings, and torture. So let's not uh, fool ourselves that, that the ADF has any intention of doing anything that's to the benefit of the people of the DRC or anywhere near a democracy. That's it for this episode of Quick Hits. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your feedback on this or any ideas for future broadcasts. You can reach me on my website, www.borealisthreatenedrisk.com. You can reach me also on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter at Borealis Saves. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, stay safe.